Boston coverage with Brett Baer and Martha McCallum. It begins right now. Hey, Brett and Martha. <laughs> she just wanted freedom, or she said, freedom. Which is funny because both of Kamala Harris's parents were immigrants from other countries who came here because when they arrived in the 60s, it was a totally free country. There was no Jim Crow, actually. Kamala Harris didn't grow up under anything like that. She grew up in a country that's freer and more equal than the one we live in now. But whatever. Kamala Harris made the same claim to Elle magazine in October. And a similar story appeared in the books that Kamala Harris claims to have written, both in 2010 and 2019. Did you know she was an author, in addition to the former girlfriend of Monty Williams? Oh, yeah. But here's the amazing thing. In 1965, which was 56 years ago, Martin Luther King himself told Playboy magazine an almost identical story. King said that he saw police, quote, accosting a young girl in Birmingham, Alabama, and we're quoting, who was walking in a demonstration with her mother. According to the Reverend Martin Luther King, the police officer asked, what do you want? And just like Kamala Harris, that girl responded, freedom. <laughs> Is this nauseating? Yes, it's nauseating. But the plagiarism isn't even the worst part. Again, to restate, Kamala Harris is the daughter of immigrants who came to the United States because we had freedom. And freedom was what allowed her to become a United States senator despite having no personal accomplishments. But instead of celebrating the United States for the amazing place it is or was, Kamala Harris has decided to tell us once again, like they all do, this is a terrible country. It's a racist country. And that's why we need more identity politics, which not incidentally will make me more powerful. <laughs> okay. You should know that she didn't come up with this herself. Her running mate, that would be, can't even remember his name. He can't remember his name. We know his name. He spent most of last year claiming that he was arrested for trying to free Nelson Mandela in South Africa. Here it is. I had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador on the streets of Soweto trying to get to see him on Robbins Island. One of the most, one of the most saintly guys I ever knew because I got arrested trying to see him when I went down to South Africa. Nelson Mandela. I came back from South Africa trying to see Nelson Mandela and getting arrested for trying to see him on Robbins Island. He, he was in prison. That's right. Joe Biden single-handedly stormed Robben Island in a Zodiac to free Nelson Mandela. Horace Cooper was there, actually. He's now the co-chairman of Project 21 and joins us tonight. Horace, thanks so much uh, for coming. In. So I actually don't hold Biden to account for this. He probably believes it. What annoys me, and I think is actually poisonous, is the, is the point of the Kamala Harris story, which is this is a bad country. It's always been a bad country. And only by giving me more power will it be a good country. I feel like I hear that everywhere. Have you noticed? Yes, but I, I want to back up just a little. Um, I don't want to give Joe Biden a complete free pass. No, you're right. Both of these two individuals ought to have been running on not the Democrat ticket, but they should have been running on the fabulous ticket. The True. pair who can best make up woke stories so that they can appear to be so much aware so much pro the progressive vision while admitting that they always knew how bad America was. Apparently, Kamala knew it when she wasn't even two or three years of age. It's an amazing thing for her parents to come to America leaving their home countries so that they could come to this place only for their child to know the woke truth. America was this awful place, and why would anyone even want to come here? I'm really, really not surprised when she was named as his running mate, Newsweek ran a survey in which a third of black working class men said they would be less likely to vote for the Democrats than they were before she got added to the ticket. Well, I think it's exactly right. But what a missed opportunity. I mean, why wouldn't Kamala Harris come out and say, you know, both my parents grew up in British colonies, one of which had the caste system, literally a caste system. And so they came here. Absolutely. Because it's a great country, despite some obvious flaws. But basically, there's nothing better. Like, why not say that? Why not celebrate America? There is this continuous need to hold this country 
in contempt. Yeah. It isn't just an accident. It isn't just a coincidence. There's this idea that the best way to appeal to America, to take a leadership role in America, is by stomping on America. Guess yeah. what? We are the greatest experiment in self-government that has happened for five centuries, and we continue to improve. We ought to be celebrated rather than condemned. Amen. I'm totally sick of it. Horace Cooper, it's great to see you tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. So could you be arrested and detained against your will in this country for catching the coronavirus? Some legislators are trying to make that happen. Also, we've got results from the races in Georgia. Bring it all to you in a moment. So how is this reassuring? A bill now working its way through the legislature in New York would allow the, quote, removal and detention of anyone who poses a, quote, significant threat to the public health. So what does that mean for coronavirus patients? And would this mean that Democrats want to separate people? I thought they were against that. Karen Lawler is a New York assemblyman. He joins us tonight to assess this. This is, Karen, going around everywhere. I think probably everyone watching has gotten a text version of this bill. Should we be concerned about it? Yes, I think we should be concerned. Uh, not only has this bill been around for a couple of years, it was just reintroduced in the last couple of days for the 2021 session. And, uh, you know, we live in unprecedented times. A year ago, if you would have told me a governor could shut down a restaurant, shut down churches, right. shut down um, anything that he wanted to, uh, I wouldn't have taken this bill as seriously. But we have seen individual liberties slipping away day by day over the last nine or ten months. And uh, this bill could become law. I've seen bills sit on the shelf and not ever be dealt with. And then all of a sudden there's an opportunity, there's a crisis, and they don't want to let it to go to waste. And all of a sudden the bill becomes law in the middle of the night, usually, usually without much debate and usually in some kind of uh, tucked away in some kind of an omnibus bill. So uh, what we need to do is raise our voices against it so that it doesn't happen. I mean, you're old enough to remember when Democrats were the party of civil liberties. I mean, presumably this is being pushed by the left. I can't imagine the Republicans pushing this, right? You know, it's very funny you say that because, yes, the, the, the civil liberties used to be part of the Democrat platform. Here's the due process you get. It's less than the due, due process that somebody like Khalid Sheikh Mohammed would get. Here's, this is directly from the bill, Tucker. Access to counsel will be facilitated to the extent feasible under the circumstances. So you can get a lawyer if it's feasible for us to get you a lawyer to get you out of the gulag. That's amazing in, in the United States of America. That's unbelievable. You, you served this country in the Marine Corps, I think, in a war zone. Bet yes. you didn't think you'd yes. come back to a country like this. No, that's an excellent point. Uh, Thomas Jefferson said the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. We're being eternally vigilant. You know, the governor's office has been asked about this bill, and, and the governor's office has mocked those of us who are concerned about it. Rather right, than take yeah. a position in favor of civil liberties, <laughs> in favor of New Yorkers, in favor of the Constitution, the governor of New York has just mocked the critics. Of course. Karen, great to see you tonight. Thank you for your vigilance. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tucker. Go to Sean Hannity now. He takes over our full coverage of those two races in the state of Georgia. Hey, Sean. All right, Tucker, thank you. Great show. Welcome to Hannity. We begin with the Fox News alert. It is 9 p.m. on the East Coast, 6 o'clock on the West Coast. The polls in Georgia have now been closed for two hours, and tonight the vote counting continues. If possible, we will make a call this hour. Both races expected to go down to the wire could be too close to call for some time to come. Now, straight ahead, we'll have a county-by-county county breakdown at the Hannity Big Board. Bill Hemmer, the great one, Mark Levin. Eric Trump joins us tonight. And later, we'll preview tomorrow's massive pro-Trump march in Washington. We'll hear from Senator Ted Cruz leading an effort to force an election audit for 10 days prior to the electoral votes being confirmed by Congress. First, we turn back to the great state of Georgia. Two Senate runoffs will determine the balance of power in the U.S. Senate. Kelly Le